Hey everybody, Mike here. Welcome to the channel and welcome to a new video in Maya 2023. Well, uh, today we're doing something very, very cool. At least I think so. It's uh, one of my favorite options in Maya. I use it quite a lot. I see very few people using it and that's why I wanted to do a video on it. So what are we talking about? Well, as you probably know, if you make an object in Maya, an ob uh, any uh, polygon object, you have options to move it, right? You can scale it, you can rotate it, you can do all that kind of stuff. But let's say you don't want to. And in this scenario, I kind of created a switch box, if you will, right? So this is my switch box. This is my switch button, okay? So on, off, that kind of idea. Now, the thing is though, I want to put in limitations what can happen. First of all, I don't want this thing to move or scale or rotate any given time because that's not the purpose of that thing, right? And I don't want to accidentally uh, select it or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock that into place so nothing can be changed. How do you do that? Well, first of all, I'm going to select everything. Go to edit, that'll be by type and history, modify and freeze transformations. Now, if we open up the attribute editor, Let's see, we'll call this the switch box, switch underscore box, and then we'll call this guy the switch button. Okay, cool. All right, so let's focus on the switch box for now. So we select that, and like I said, we don't want anything to happen with it. So we're gonna go into the attribute editor, and we're gonna go to switch box shape. Uh, is that the one? Yeah, I think it is. Or is it this one? Uh, this is the one, yeah, okay. So the switch box tab. Now, we've got translate, rotate, skill, and shear values. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hover over the word translate. I'm gonna right click and click on lock attributes. And as I do that, everything will be grayish blue. Do the same here with rotate, same here with skill, and the same here with shear. Now, if I select this guy, I can still select it, but as you can see, if I want to move it and I hit W, I don't have a control. If I hit R, the control changes, but I can't grab it. And if I hit E, we see the rotate uh, thingy, but I can't rotate either. So that's a done deal. Now, what about this guy? There are a couple of things I don't want that thing to do. I don't want it to go up because there's no point in that. I don't want it to scale and I certainly don't want it to rotate, all right? So there are a couple of things we can kind of eliminate. And we're gonna do exactly that the same way we did that with the box. So we're gonna go to the switch button, there we are. Do you want this to rotate? Never, okay. So right click, go to lock attribute. Do we want it to skill? Never, lock attribute. Do we want it to shear? Never, lock attribute. How about translate? Well, I want it to translate, but I only want it to translate in this direction. So either that way or that way. And that is in uh, the box Z or Z, depending on where you live and how you pronounce that, right? Okay, so I know that X and Y, we're never gonna use those. So I'm gonna go into the individual boxes here, click in it, right click, lock attribute, click in it, right click, lock attribute. So the only value we have left is translate in Z. And I'll prove it to you because if I wanna pull it up, it won't work, okay, cool. So now that we have that, we're gonna look at limitations. And if we go down a little bit, we have limit information where it says translate, rotate, and skill. Now, if we look at rotate and skill, that's all blocked off because we did that up here. And we can't change anything there, right? However, if we look at the translate option just above that, this guy, we'll see that two of them have been blocked, which is X and Y, which makes sense because that's the X and Y up here. The Z, however, has a certain value. Right now it's set to uh, 0 0.14, minus 0 0.14. Let's set that to zero, all right, cool. Now, we need to tell Maya where the limit is. So if I move this switch to the left, how far can it go before I want it to be limited that it can't go any further? So I'm gonna jump into this view, we're gonna to go to the top and let's have a look. We're gonna push this guy down until we're at the end of our switch box, which is somewhere around here. 
and it says 4.51. Cool, so I'm gonna click on this guy right here and I'm gonna say, listen, I want it to be negative 4.51 one way and plus 4.51 the other way. And the neutral position in the middle should be zero, all right? Okay, now that we have that set, let's see if everything works properly. So I already showed you that I cannot do anything else but move it sideways. Let's see if it's limited by the end of the switch box. So if I'm gonna drag it full speed, here we go. It won't go any further either way, right? So that's how that works. And the reason why this is so cool is if you uh, use your imagination, you can use this to do all sorts of things. You can have a balloon inflate to a certain level and then stop. You can have a, a train automatically stop on a track. You can have switches and machines and all sorts of things that you can uh, limit and control this way. And it's a lot of fun, right? So yeah, that's it for this short little video. That's uh, what I wanted to share about locking attributes and uh, limit information. Um, what I would uh, like you to do though, is uh, leave a comment how and where you use this kind of thing, right? That's it for this video. Uh, hit like, hit subscribe, you know all that jazz, right? And thanks for watching. See you guys next one, bye.